Matt. Yeah, when you're going down the side of a hill and um, you see the whole top of it come down on the top of you. Uh, yeah, scary. That's why you just learn to snowboard real fast, real quick, and to the side. So, anyway, obviously I didn't get killed. Um, hey everybody, um, thought about what I would say with everything, and I think everybody kind of knows electrical for the most part, lighting, power, plugs. It's not really a unusual thing. I think everybody saw the LED lighting that we put up here last week. Without a doubt, LED is the new technology. Everybody kind of knows that. If you haven't really converted everything to LED, then uh, you should, because why wouldn't you? It's smart, it's less expensive. Ooh, wow, there it goes. I have kind of an interesting upbringing story again. My entire life, I've only done two things. It's be an electrician and be in a professional rock band, which I don't talk too much about my clients, but it's kind of obvious that I'm not kind of a normal electrician. Uh, my father was a builder and an engineer, so 31 years ago I started as an electrician. And um, he also played rock and remember, you know, whatever fusion rock in the 60s, and so he got me into playing guitar. So I, uh, the duality came out, he simultaneously was showing me stuff and said, hey, if you want to go out and uh, do anything, the thing that I want you to do for sure is I want you to have a skill. And uh, I had a lot of respect for my father, though I wanted to go work in a music store and do something fun and entertaining as a teenager. He, uh, I followed his advice and learned this trade, which has obviously grown and expanded to the point where I moved down to Los Angeles and uh, had uh, worked for another uh, very decent electrical contracting company, which I was just seeing because they were in this networking group, I believe, in Santa Monica 20 something years ago or something. So, um, worked for them for quite a while. And uh, not quite a while, but several years until I got reestablished in Los Angeles and then expanded myself out and started as my own electrical contracting company here in Los Angeles. Move forward with all those things. The um, interesting part about most of the, the power and the lighting that you do is that you get to meet, uh, you get to perform and, and, and put juice in a lot of people's homes, which is it's, people don't really get it because you nobody really sees it, right? Nobody really understands the power on the wall until you don't have it. Then you're like, oh my gosh, the wall's coming to an end. My plug doesn't work, right? But the one thing that people do know is lighting. And um, lighting school creates drama, creates effect. There's a lot of really cool things that you can do for internal lighting. You can do lighting design too at the same time. Well, there's no lighting designers in here, I don't think so. Um, but another thing that I've learned to do that's unusual, um, that I've adapted from my other skill, is stage lighting. And for instance, we just did it in a church. And so not only would we put normal lighting that's functional like you have in this room, if you were having some type of uh, whatever you wanted to be lit, but we do all the programmed and uh, after the suspended stage lighting. It seems like it's uh, it's reasonably similar, except it's all designed specifically to highlight a point and a place instead of general illumination. You know, that's why stage is kind of different. It's fun. It's interesting. It's a different aspect of what we do. Um, what else would be interesting about something? I think some of the um, the most unusual things or the, the best successes that I would have were primarily just making people's life come back online when there's been families that have been highly panicked. Um, okay, the most unusual story I have to say ever as an electrician I've ever done. So I'm doing a bit and I'm walking outside with a man who is a quadriplegic and I, what's it called when you, when you can't move but you can't breathe? Like you have to have a ventilator. Yeah. Except problem. for that, I'm almost, almost the point where, I mean, this machine is completely. So I walked with this man, or excuse me, I walked outside and he drove his car out and he was communicating to me on this board of all these things that he wanted so I could give him the ability to see outside through cameras and, and have his lights controlled. 
because he lived on a screen in front of him. I think he could like move one finger. So as he's out there, something breaks on his mobile cart, okay? And his caregivers are like, panicking and running around, freaking out, because also the guy can't breathe. Okay? So he's like gonna die. And she's trying to fix this component stuff. And so she hands me this ventilator, okay? And so I click this thing on and she's running around this home trying to figure stuff out. So I'm sitting with this man out on his deck, just making him breathe, keeping him alive, just going, wow, this is the most unusual thing I thought I would be doing this morning as I'm keeping this guy going. So there you go. That's my kind of interesting story about something that's unusual for a bit. You're a hero. Yes. <laughs> yeah, my hair still looked good when I was doing it. <laughs> Um, if anybody has any questions on, on lighting or anything, or... <clears throat> oh, uh, yeah, yes. Carl. Do you do commercial and residential? I do. I do commercial, residential. Um, the only thing I really don't do is hardcore industrial. That would be overpasses and freeways and stuff like that. you do uh, electrical panels? Is that great? Yes. Um, pretty much anything that involves power, um, I'd like to primarily stay within, I do a lot of TI, and then I do a lot of residential and everything that's maintenance within it. I don't expand towards larger, huge jobs or brand new construction, as I have found the exposure to be not the best. How about charging stations for electric cars? I do a lot of charging stations for electric cars. I found it to be, uh, everybody's getting electric cars, so, you know. It seems like every day you get a new one, you put one in. So that's a good one. Okay, there's two ways it happens. You come out an electric panel, and you can, if your panel is strong enough to support electric car. Now this is this is important because a lot of people live in condos and apartments. So what happens is is the power supply from the condominium is always generally your basement, right? And everybody has their panels inside their homes. You have to sometimes learn to split the power in your meter in your condominium and then run it through your garage. That's one way. Or you create a new little sub meter. I don't know if you've seen them, but a little glass meter so everybody reads it. You can put little single ones of those and redistribute the power line. There's no one way it's done, right? Every building provides a different scenario in which would allow you to put a car station in. Just come in the same There are some chargers, I believe, that are better. They charge cars faster or some systems? Absolutely. Higher pressure, more juice, charge it faster. You get those? Yeah, they're, they're all the same. They're just different stuff. Your favorite bands? My favorite bands? I got a lot now. You know, a lot, a lot, a lot of bands. This is the top three. Uh, I love the Eagles. Yes, Trish. Hi, uh, I just want to give a shout out for um, Stuart and his uh, his whole team. They came to my uh, con my new condo and completely. I wanted to update all the lights, so we had probably it was like fifty five or sixty. Um, a lot. lot. Yeah, my whole my whole. Story she was likes her lights. <laughs> <laughs> So it was a great job. Um, next month, we're going to have you guys all over so you can check it out. Thank you so much, Stuart. I also want to give a quick plug, no pun intended. Um, and I'm kind of a DIY guy, and uh, I've changed out a million, maybe not a million, but 900,000 uh, electric boxes. And the one time I did it where the whole house just went dark, and I went through my whole mental checklist of stuff, and nothing was working. I couldn't restore the, the power. And I actually started to panic a little bit because really, when you lose things, Nothing like mm -hmm. car keys or, you know, nothing is really as panic inducing as losing power. Um, especially with little kids in the house at night. And I called up Stu, and he was actually in an airport terminal getting ready to board the plane. And he walked me through a process and got me through it, and we got the power back on, and it was like, wow. And he got back on his plane, and he was gone. <laughs> Off to snowboarding somewhere. <laughs> Thank you, Stuart. Thank you very much. Great job.